in your bed and uh, hear us speak about our, our internship experience. Uh, today, I'll be talking about virtual product development. Uh, virtual product development simply refers to virtual prototyping. Uh, I'm studying virtual prototyping because uh, I want to know who is using it in the industry and uh, how it can be applied to their body systems. So today, my overview is uh, going to discuss the background of virtual prototyping, uh, future of virtual prototyping, why virtual prototyping, and uh, implementation, results, and conclusion. Background. What is virtual prototyping? Virtual prototyping is a simulation-based software. Uh, it can be used to uh, simulate complex uh, features by complex mechanisms, and uh, it gives you the flexibility to work in, uh, in an environment where you can see what's happening before you actually build a physical prototype. So the future of virtual prototyping. Virtual prototyping is bridging the gap between old conventional methods and the new concurrent uh, virtual prototyping. Um, some of the examples right here, uh, as you can see, there's a spring system. Uh, when we import it to a virtual, virtual prototyping environment, what we can do is uh, analyze the springs of this, uh, this vehicle right here and uh, try to see what we can improve upon. Uh, doing this, you, uh, you increase the efficiency of your product before you build a physical prototype and uh, you'll get better results. And probably there won't be that many recalls for a vehicle. <laughs> so, why is virtual prototyping popular? So, in the recent years, uh, there's been a tremendous uh, advancement in computer technology. Uh, because of this, engineers have gained benefit, uh, beneficial uh, and significantly uh, computational uh, power uh, in using the tools. So these tools are used uh, in uh, various fields in the industry. Uh, can be used in uh, designing, development, uh, manufacturing, and analysis. So, during our research project, uh, we followed a five-step guideline uh, to get ourselves uh, familiarized with the tools. Um, through our process, we probably made up to developing engineering judgment skills. Um, now I got to tell you that this process was not that easy that we went through. Uh, it took a lot of work. So, so some of the softwares that you all may be uh, familiarized with are SOLIDWORKS. Uh, simply is a, it's a computer aid. It's, uh, it's a CAD program where you can develop 3D uh, models. Uh, we use MATLAB. Well, we actually didn't get to the chance to use MATLAB there, but we uh, test upon it with a simple pendulum that Nurse talked about. Um, another software that is used is Atoms. And over here, it just shows some applications uh, where it can be used. Uh, you can see it's used in the fashion industry. It gives you the chance to actually scope uh, what it is that you're looking at, like this. You see this guy in a fashion suit. Uh, so for somebody, they can go ahead and analyze it and see the shape, how they want it to fit, and everything. And over here, we have a cell phone. We can test the stress levels. People drop their cell phones all the time. Um, by doing this, they can uh, test that and see, uh, pick up, uh, improve on how they can develop better uh, for durability. And of course, in the automotive industry, um, you see a, a spark plugs and a crankshaft. Uh, they can be used to improve uh, ignition processes and, um, and uh, engines. So CAD designs. Um, my final project was this wheel mobile manipulator. Uh, some of you all uh, may know um, or may have heard of the easiest way I can relate it to you guys is uh, 
some of the mobile manipulators uh, you see are like the ones that, that are sent out to the moon, something like that. Uh, so these are some of the parts. Uh, first, uh, this is just a skeleton model. And over there is the robotic arm, basically the manipulator, and the wheel. And I have an exploded view of the products. So what can it be used for? Uh, basically, it can be used for uh, highway maintenance. Uh, it can be used to dispose hazardous uh, material. And it can be used for mining and for uh, labor intensive manipulations. So in order to gain familiarizations uh, about what this tool, we went through a series of testing. Uh, some of the testings we did was the pendulum, uh, the wheel, and the spear, and the four bar mechanism. So using the equations of motion, um, what we looked at first is comparing the uh, analytical calculation to a simulation. Now, the first thing we did was we started out with a simple uh, pendulum equation. Um, basically, we had uh, a period of 90 seconds versus 78 seconds with, compared to the simulation, which gave us a 15.38% error. So we realized that it was off. So we tried it on a compound pendulum, and we got better results. So this tells us that Sal was not only uh, SOLIDWORKS, or the virtual prototyping uh, software that we use, analyzes the system as a compound pendulum, something that's more real. The four bar mechanism. Uh, Nursia expressed to you guys the complexity of solving for that um, and the long derivations of equations that can be used for it, and it'll take a long time to solve. So, um, some of the software that she mentioned was Maple to help you solve this. Uh, equations much faster. What we did here is just use the, we applied some torque and we wanted to gain some type of points. And when we applied uh, a torque of 600 RPM, um, the results are pretty much accurate for 600 RPM and 1200 RPM. But when we uh, went to 1800 RPM, we realized there was a percent error. So this basically shows that uh, it's supposed to show that um, it actually makes sense, actually. Uh, it, it makes sense in a way that the, large, the smaller the period, the larger the frequency of uh, the receipt. So we had a percent error. Uh, for the steer and the wheel, um, we calculated the velocity. Uh, for the velocity, uh, we had a percent difference of 4.28. And for the steer, it was 1.25. Uh, Mercy went ahead and I uh, explained to you guys, but she didn't say uh, the reason why we had a better, she expressed it a little bit, but the reason why we had a better percent uh, difference for the spirit is because of the number of passes. Um, passes meaning uh, it's the edges. For the cylinder, it's touching at multiple points in the cylinder. For the spear, it's only at one point. So in conclusion, uh, so far, uh, the, state, the state that I'm in is uh, I've completed uh, the CAD model of, the, of my final project. Now it's leading to uh, doing calculations and actually uh, monitoring and building the actual physical prototype. So I'd like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Banneke Krovey, uh, my mentor, PhD student, Nate Peng Lee. And uh, Sean Crumps owns Drexel Gitney uh, for making it possible for me to do this uh, for this summer program. And Christopher Williams, my colleagues that I've worked with, Nurse Morano, and the Soccer Shepherd. Thank you.